Hi, welcome to City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski. Mayor, welcome. Hi, Walt. Good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. And I see that you've brought along one of your department heads with us today, City Planner Aaron Clausen. Aaron, welcome. Thank you. Always good to see you. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I'd like to tell our viewers that we're going to be spending the half hour today talking about housing in Beverly. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, the city recently completed a comprehensive housing plan. So I'm going to throw out a very general question to you. How would you characterize the housing needs of the city of, of Beverly? Let me give you the layman's version and then Aaron's the expert. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, what we suspected and what we've, you know, confirmed is that we, like every community, have a significant need for new housing. Um, as the baby boomers retire and a greater percentage of the population moves into retirement, fewer in the population are in the workforce, which means we're going to need more workers to come into the region. So we'll need significant new senior housing options for seniors who are ready to sell the house that they raised their family in. We also need significant housing for the workforce that will fill the jobs the seniors retire from and the service jobs to serve seniors' needs and their desires as they look for ways to you know, go out and recreate and, and enjoy their retirement. So there's mm -hmm. a significant housing need. It's across profiles of population, and it's also across income levels. Right, right, yeah. Uh, Aaron, do you want to expand on that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, if I bit? could just, I can throw some data points from the housing plan itself to underline that point. But I think what it, what it points out in the needs analysis is that essentially, um, there are housing types across, across the range that are needed. So house, households that can have access to family housing, to housing that would be for individuals, for seniors, um, rental, and both home ownership. So there's, there's a need across the, spe the spectrum, and as the mayor pointed out in terms of affordability. Uh, what, the, what the analysis showed was that uh, over 35% of all Beverly households spend more than 30% of their income on housing. And that's what we would call cost burden. Um, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's more than we should be spending. And of that, 17% of the households are spending more than 50% of their income on housing. And that's severely cost burden. So you can see that there's a need there. Um, about a third of the households, that's about 5,700 households uh, in Beverly, um, are, are earning 80% of the area median income or less. Um, and of those, about 67% of them are spending 30% of their income, and then, uh, and then an additional 17% uh, are spending over 50. So you can see there's, there's, a, there's a cost burden on many residents, over sure. a third uh, of the city. Um, and this isn't just rental. I mean, one, one of the uh, primary needs that, that the study pointed out was there is a need for rental housing at both the market and kind of the, the, the mid-low income, so what we'd call um, workforce housing. Uh, there's also a need in terms of uh, uh, home ownership, you know, whereby there's, a, there's essentially a $50,000 gap between what the median household prices or house, housing prices and what the median household is earning uh, for the region. So there's a gap on, on both fronts. Mm -hmm. Well, if I could touch on a couple other points before, because I, I know you want to move into the components of the plan, but sure. just quickly. Um, we have a lot of Beverly residents who, when they retire and sell the home they raised their family in, want to stay in Beverly and have been no, not been having success in doing so. Mm -hmm. We need more senior housing, and that's a challenge. We also need more housing for seniors that is multi-generational. Some seniors want to live in developments with other seniors. Some want you no know, part of that and want to right. live with people of all different generations. Sure. Um, so there's that. The other piece of this is that in a lot of ways, our neighborhoods, particularly our single family neighborhoods around the, the city, are mature in that most of the developable land has been developed. And we are trying to hang on to and protect open space, parklands, playgrounds, and wooded areas. So that's important. All that taken together means that the right place for the needed housing in Beverly is as close to the train stations as it can be, and particularly mm -hmm. in the downtown near the Beverly Depot. Right. So we've been embracing the transit-oriented development model, which has been promoted in our master plan and in, in our efforts. Uh, and what that means is that Rantoul Street and around the, the train depot and in the, in the future, perhaps some of the Bass River waterfront behind the train depot are going to, be, uh, to become uh, 
uh, denser multifamily housing with first floor commercial retail and, and residential up above. And that's important because it's the right place for the housing in this community in that it brings fewer cars per unit. Aaron's got some data that shows right. for every unit of housing, less than one car. And that's important because, you know, we're working hard to improve our intersections and our roadways. We've got several in infrastructure improvements to key intersections, Henry's, down by the Beverly Salem Bridge, other places that are going to kind of recapture capacity. When we did the two roundabouts on Brimble Ave, that created new capacity. We have the same potential with some of our other downtown intersections. And that's important because the housing we need will bring some vehicles. But the denser downtown housing brings fewer vehicles because people walk places. People take the train to sure, work. Sure. And that's an important piece of it. Um, so I'll stop there. There's plenty more to say. And, sure. And I'm sure we're going to get back to the transit-oriented development in, in a second now. And just to repeat for our viewers what you said, th there's a necessity for housing that, that accommodates different uh, types of housing as well as different income, income levels. levels. And uh, for let, let's talk about the plan recommendations and what we are doing. What is the city doing to implement these plan recommendations? And I, you've been kind enough to send us some uh, a couple of slides that can kind of guide the uh, the discussion, Aaron. So I'm going to ask our control room to put up slide number one, and maybe the two of you could kind of speak to whatever is important there on on slide number one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Walt. So what you've put up on the screen is the first part of. 14 recommendations that were put forth in the housing plan to deal with these needs. And I'm just going to touch on the ones that, that we're working on or have already been working on since mm -hmm. uh, the plan's been completed. Uh, the first is operationalizing the Affordable Housing Trust. It's in place um, and the, the trust board is in place and, and looking at ways to develop policy for managing that. And essentially that's funding that comes into the city through the inclusionary housing ordinance the, the payment in Luffy um, that we receive uh, from certain developments, and then also the potential to seek funding through the CPC in the uh, affordable housing uh, element and that, that comes through the city each year there. Um, there's about $750,000 there now for us to manage, so we're working on how to best utilize that. Uh, and then we're working on supporting transit oriented development um, policies moving forward uh, on that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at how to reinstate the housing rehab program. This is something we implemented years back through the Community Development Block Grant. We're working with the Housing Trust Board right now to determine how we can use these resources in the trust to, to reuse that. Uh, it's a great way to help uh, homeowners uh, that need some assistance in, in rebuilding roofs and, and heating systems and the like. Um, we're looking at ways we can preserve existing affordable housing, um, you know, uh, affordable housing projects that, that might expire over time. Uh, we've already amended the inclusionary housing ordinance, working with the city council um, to introduce um, additional and deeper affordability restrictions on new construction that happens. So uh, going from an 80 percent requirement and adding options for 60 percent of area median income. OK. Uh, next slide, please. And let's look at the last slide. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, really looking at continued civic engagement, this is something that we'll, we hope to roll out soon, but I think it's all part of the conversation that we have with both Inclusionary Housing Trust, um, but looking at ways to inform the public of what kind of programs that are available, whether it's through the city or through the state. And it's something that we want to kind of get out and kind of do more of a grassroots effort on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned um, uh, supporting new development with access to, uh, to public infrastructure and specifically transit-oriented development. And for our viewers, uh, I wanna, I'd like you to really emphasize and tell our viewers, what, what do you mean by that so they understand what is transit-oriented development sure. and how does it benefit the city? Sure. So transit-oriented development is essentially the, a concept that's developed over the last 15, 20 years whereby you concentrate uh, new development and mixes the uses, so housing, commercial, uh, office space, in an area that is uh, already developed or underdeveloped, that has good access to public infrastructure, um, and because it's transit-oriented development, has, is proximate to public transit facilities. Uh, so that would be for us the area along, particularly Rantoul Street, um, that's proximate to uh, the Beverly Depot station. Mm -hmm. And the, the benefit there is that um, it's the kind of new development that can have the lowest impact on city services 
um, but the highest benefit in terms of, of you know, kind of the objectives that the city is seeking to, seeking to meet, like right. new housing, economic development. Um, some examples, the biggest ones come down to transportation. Um, what we've seen nationwide is that uh, transit-oriented development projects utilize transit or um, non-motorized transportation modes three to five times more than the typical project. Um, what we've seen in Beverly specifically, we've, we've, we've looked at uh, multifamily projects on Rantoul Street, about eight of them representing over 500 units um, that are, on average there's one less than one car per dwelling unit for that property. Mm -hmm. So if it's a 90 unit property, there's less than 90 cars that, that, are, be, that are parking on that lot mm -hmm. that, that serve that building. It's about 0.92 per dwelling unit. And that's, that's both with the national data and with our own experience with the several TOD projects that have been built along Rantoul Street. Um, so we're requiring one space and we're needing less than that, you know, one space per unit as we see the, the, the properties develop. Um, so as, and, and, and here's the other part. People are walking to where they want to go more frequently if they're living downtown, right. out to dinner, to the store, uh, to a show. They're garaging their vehicle and taking the train, not all, but a goodly percentage, taking the train in and out of work. And so they may not take the car out on the street every day, whereas somebody living out in a neighborhood away from the downtown really needs to get in their car to go much of anywhere. So, you know, that's how we can bring more of the needed housing without bringing more of the congestion. Um, and another benefit of having it downtown is that it's helping to really build the retail sector sure. back in our downtown because there are more people looking to shop downtown and stay local. Tell, tell, uh, talk a little bit more about how it minimizes the, the drain or, or the impact on, on city resources and what you can then, if so, you're not spending that money there, right. that, that frees it up to well, do. Here's, yeah, here's yeah. a number on schools, and Aaron can, can expand on this. Um, we're finding that since most of the transit-oriented building that's going on downtown is one and two bedroom, mm -hmm. it's not bringing kids. Yeah. It's bringing essentially empty nesters who have found the place to go after selling their home and younger workers, millennials, 20s and 30s, who are living you know, there to get in and out of Boston on the train or whatnot. Um, it's bringing, in our experience from the developments we've seen along Rantoul, one child per 30 units of housing into our schools. Whereas the single family neighborhoods around town are bringing in one kid for every three or so three and a quarter. houses. Mm -hmm. So that's a vast difference. Right. And, right. you know, there are people who are concerned that with all this building, we're going to overwhelm our schools. Not the case. Not how it's working. Yeah. Now, the other, the other knock I, that, I, that I hear is that uh, the, the impact on traffic, the ch congested streets and so forth. Can you talk a little bit about how, how the city is planning to deal with, sure. with that issue? So we're, we've got four intersection improvements planned in the downtown. The Henry's intersection the intersection by the golf and tennis club on Balch and McKay. Right. The intersection at the bottom of Bridge Street, when you come in from Ryle side and you get to where Bridge meets River behind the train station next to Moynihan Lumber. Right. And then the intersection at the foot of the Beverly Salem Bridge. Done right, all of those intersections will increase capacity. Right? They'll move traffic more safely and more effectively and efficiently through those intersections, which allows for more cars to utilize the roads at those intersections and flowing through without having a negative impact. Yeah. We know that a new housing unit brings, you know, a percentage of a new vehicle. But we also know that the housing is very needed in Beverly. This has all been very well studied, documented, and planned out. And this is, as I said, the right place to do it. And the least impact mm -hmm. on congestion, on traffic that you'll get from anywhere in town that we could put these, these housing units. Yeah. yeah, if I could just add to that too. So along with a lot of those intersection projects that the mayor mentioned, you know, re reconstruction of Rantoul Street, the reconstruction of Broadway has really focused on multimodal uh, modes of transportation as well. So pedestrians and bicycles, this is another way to continue to benefit um, the, the traffic impacts or, you know, make it less so on the redevelopment downtown. People, when they have a better place to walk and bike, they're going to use it. When they have a place that they can walk and bike to, they're more likely to use it. So that's the other benefit of these, these infrastructure projects. Not only do they improve traffic 
capacity, they also improve other modes of transportation, which will uh, kind of multiply right. those benefits. Right. And I know that you are having, in about two weeks, I think on September 28th, you're having a, a meeting, a traffic meeting at the Briscoe School. Do you want to talk about that for our viewers? Sure, what I can talk about, is there was a, a, a downtown parking strategy that we worked with Nelson Nygaard about a year ago. The, uh, the plan was, was uh, finalized in May. So this is a, it's a plan that gives us a strategy to utilize public parking spaces downtown more effectively and efficiently so that uh, people have better access to them. Uh, it's better customer service uh, in terms of technology, more accessible to the public. Um, so what we'll be talking about on the 20, 28th is what are the recommendations, what's the implementation plan, and how long will that take? Mm -hmm. And it's all part of this conversation because we know that downtown's becoming a more popular destination. And yeah. we want to continue that, that trajectory, sure. and, and parking sure. management is a key component of that. Yeah. Now, um, the, the, uh, staying with transit-oriented development, what other city objectives does the, the, the implementation of transit-oriented development, what other city objectives does that help support? Why don't we talk about affordable housing in that context and beyond? Is sure. that okay? Uh, you know, I, I had coffee at the Senior Center yesterday uh, and talked with a couple of different people. One woman who lives in Mileside, and she and her husband need to sell the home they raised their kids in. They're a little less mobile than they were, some health issues. They're ready to sell, but they're afraid to sell because they can't find anywhere to move that they can afford as they look at the sale price, projected sale price and, and where to go. So we're trying through the inclusionary zoning ordinance to get more affordable units within the new TOD development mm -hmm. units, and that's one piece. And another piece is to work with our affordable housing agencies in, in town and regionally to create more options there. Um, you know, we're working with Harbor Light Community Partners on a 40R development just up the hill from the high yes, school right, exactly. that would bring 75 units of affordable family and workforce housing at different income levels. Right. Uh, working with Harbor Light and the YMCA who are, who are trying to partner on adding some new units of housing at the Cabot Street Y. Units of housing that would provide a home for adults with autism who've aged out of the special education programs and now need to make their adult lives. Uh, and individuals who are, who are homeless and have done, done very well with, uh, in the shelters in Beverly and Salem and now are ready for a more long-term, more independent housing opportunity. Things like that. The senior options, it, it goes to working with, you know, working with property owners and and potential developers around some senior affordable housing, more multi-generational affordable housing. There was another woman I spoke with at the Senior Center yesterday who has a Section 8 portable voucher, and the development she's lived in for a number of years, she fears that they're going to price her out with rent increases and doesn't know where to go if that happens. Yeah. So, you know, these are we, we very much need more, as I said, more housing of all types, and affordable is right at the, at the front of the of the needs list. We're working hard with our partners on that and as Aaron said with our affordable housing trust fund resources right. to try to help make that happen as well. Yeah. Now that, that's the so-called 40B that, that we're talking about, correct? Well, we're, we're not subject to the state's 40B law because we have over 10 percent well, we of our housing stock designated officially as affordable. Right. But we don't want to fall back to that level. We know that regionally there's a significantly greater need than 10 percent. Yeah. So. Yeah. If, if I could underline a point the mayor made uh, about affordability more generally and, and how TOD can help with that. Um, on average, Americans spend over 50 percent of their income on housing and transportation costs. TOD gives an opportunity to reduce that, that impact where, whereby somebody can live there and not have to own a car or a second car. And what, you, what we've seen in studies nationwide is that um, you can cut the transportation cost of uh, a TOD project down to 9%, uh, down from 25%. So there's, there's an affordability component that's not just about the housing, it's about just the cost of living. If you can live downtown and you can get access to transit or you can walk to work, that, it, that can be a, a life-changing experience in terms of w how you spend your money. Um, from an economic de development perspective, the mayor pointed out earlier, new residents, new businesses downtown support the redevelopment of, of, of our downtown. Um, if you're spending less on transportation costs, that's discretionary money that you can now spend towards other things like entertainment services sure, that that's sure, the small sure. businesses of Beverly benefit from. 
Yeah, sure. Now, are there other projects and things that we're working on that will help support the, the availability of affordable housing, uh, Mike? Well, I mentioned two that, that are, you know, in the pipeline right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and the Harbor Light one up the hill from here is an important one because we've got a lot of folks in Beverly who are working good jobs, steady jobs, you know, jobs that aren't going away, but their overall income has them at a point where it's hard to stay up with the increasing rents, even in the, the housing units they're in. And that development that's proposed would have, gosh, about two-thirds of the units would be you know, somewhere in the order of 40 to 50 units would be for people working good jobs whose income is at 60% or just below of the area income. And that's about a $54,000, $55,000 income level, um, you know, for a couple or a family or an individual, um, you know, to meet. So those projects are important, and, and we, can't, we can't do one project and think it's enough. And, and we, need, we, need, yeah. we need a greater amount of housing stock to be available to, to see the, the rents at the market rate kind of level, you know, and, and allow for the market rate to be affordable to a lot of people as well. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, four intersections that, that, that you were, but you didn't mention the exit off of uh, 128 on exit 18 where mm -hmm. the, uh, the off-ramp hits uh, uh, Route 22. Do you, do you want to mm -hmm. say anything about that? There was a big article in today's paper as we're sure. sitting here on September I mean, September it's timely. It, it's a different focus. Yeah. That's, that focus is, is really entirely on safety. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's been probably a generation or more that that's been needed. You know, Centerville has grown you know, greatly over the decades. And the number of people driving up and down Essex Street, getting on and off the highway yeah, in Centerville. Gotten... So the ability for people to safely turn left and head up the hill into Centerville or turn left to get on the highway, that's the need for that new uh, treatment there. Yeah, yeah. Any, any other comments about uh, some of the recommendations from, from the housing uh, uh, plan that, that the city is, uh, is implementing, um, Aaron? Sure. I, if, if I could just add on to the point that the mayor, mayor is making about the Harbor Lake Community Partners Project, um, that's going to that's going to take a rezoning uh, using the 40R statute uh, of Mass General Law, and that really helps mitigate any kind of cost that the city might see in terms of school age population. There's payments that are made to city to the city to offset any additional costs for school age children going to the Beverly School System. So that's one way we can support uh, creating new affordable housing while mitigating the impact on city services. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's an important part of that. The other piece of it is it's, it's, a, it's truly a mixed income project, you know, working, at, uh, working and providing housing at, for workforce housing and then low income households. So there's another way of kind of making sure we're not, we're not concentrating low income housing. We're, we're looking at providing housing at a range of income levels in a place. Right. Now, the, the demographics, uh, I know that this, the population of Beverly has been a, about 40,000 for the last decade, right? Thank you. Let, just a point on that. <laughs> Beverly's population in 1970 was 40,000 people. <laughs> Beverly's population in 2017 is 40,000 people. Yeah. Families are smaller than they were nearly 50 yeah. years ago. We have more housing units, but yeah. we don't have a greater population. Yeah. And I think sometimes people, when they see that there's been... You know, no change, and, and, yeah. and look, on balance, all the development that people have seen in the last decade along and around Rantoul Street totals what, about 400 units? Yeah, that's been done in the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, you know, really going back to the last recession when everything kind of was put on pause. Um, so we, you know, we haven't grown in that way that people, that some people are concerned with. Um, we will grow in, in total numbers, I would imagine, with these new housing units, but it's, it's really modest in, in a sense when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just have a, a minute or two left, gentlemen. Any, any final thoughts, any, uh, anything you'd like to share with our viewers before we close? Sure. You know, we, we work hand-in-hand -hand with anybody who wants to invest in Beverly, small, large, and, and the people who are looking to invest in creating housing, both affordable and market rate, um, you know, we put them through their paces. And... Yes, we need more dense multifamily housing right around the train station. And yes, we're really working hard to make sure that aesthetically and from a design sure. perspective, it works. Will it be more stories than you see today? Absolutely, because that's where the housing needs to be. But we work very hard to keep to a standard and require that there be aesthetics that work for the neighborhood and the, and the downtown as a whole. Yeah. And we'll continue to do that. Yeah. 
Aaron, any last words? I'll let the mayor have the last words well, on this go. one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, Aaron Claussen, uh, city planner, thank you for being uh, with us. Thank uh, you. Uh, and sharing the stage here with our mayor, Mike Cahill. Mike, thank you for being uh, you on the show. Thank you very much. And I'd like to remind our viewers that you have been watching City Scene with Mayor Mike Cahill. Cahill. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.